Okay folks, for you it's just a short moment in time, but for me, your time's transpired. This is the driver's side view. Those little badges I'm showing you on the fret. That's the Clyde Builders badge. Clyde Engineering became Commonwealth Engineering, which has now been taken over many years ago by Gonon Ends. And there's the other badge on the tender. might not be quite legible what it is but for those who know these tenders were built by Mort Docks so they were built in conjunction with Clyde Engineering for this one particular locomotive and these tenders were sort of nicknamed turret tenders because of this top section see the 36 class in the background has the same sort of tender And these are the tools that are supplied. Camera's having a bug of a job trying to focus it in. But this is roughly how your model should look when complete. It'll make it look better than mine. I don't care. The thing is, I've not only built this Loco you know, HO scale as a kit, but I kit bashed it in N scale. And that's a subject of a previous YouTube video. And there is the N scale one against the HO scale. I think I did quite well. The N scale version I did back in 1998. And this is the first time I've ever done weathering. It's built up a Bartman 484. And all up here seem to be so correct. I said, hey, why not? And in the previous video, you see all this conjugated valve gear working. So this is what I'm about to attempt in the HO scale version. And you want to see how I did that? I'll be able to show you in a moment. Yeah, you might whinge. I've got the Clyde Builders badge on the HO scale, but no numbering. Well, <clears throat> it's fun. You can see there is no Clyde badge. Just the numbers. But hey, don't care, don't worry. That'll soon be sorted. I'm going to bring up the tender. Oh, break part of it now. See if I can do this without breaking it any further. There you go. Now I've got the fireman stood up here. Yeah. In this arrangement, I'm just tending to prod some of the coal into the auger. That's real locomotive coal in there. And I shall be doing the same to the HO scale version as well. Nice camera, come on, focus up. Nice camera can be cantankerous at times. Yeah, sharp image for it. Yeah, I could have put a builder's badge on the tender, but I've decided not to. So yeah, you can see there, like a 5711, and again I've done the ladder, so that it's red. The buffers to this loco are actually inside the tender at the moment. Intentions where I was going to put them on, but the problem is, even though in HO I can run the KD, the autocoupler, the in scale one, buffers. Well, let's have another look at this. Because I've had to cut such a big recess for the coupling to swing, that's the only reason why I left the buffers off. So let's just have this comparison again. So you can imagine the HO scale one will have its numbers. And buffers? Well, the NSCAR one's got the numbers only. <clears throat> so I'd like to believe I've done pretty damn good. So we're about to see how I did the weathering. Now most artists, <clears throat> they've got a choice of what they want to use. Be it acrylics, be it pen and pencil, 
bad watercolour pencils. And that's precisely what I use for my weathering. You can go out to the hobby shops and buy all sorts of bits and pieces. So just put the camera in free float position. Jackson's drawing supplies. Expensive, I'll give it that. So just bear with me, I organised myself. Now, I'll move all this item out of the way. And try watercolours. Now these are the... I've had these for years too by the way. 40 cents, my goodness. These are water paints. See one's gone missing. But that's to be expected. But I hardly ever use those. And these... Well, part of the paper's gone, but... There we go. Painting pencils. They're watercolours. Dip them in water and use like a paintbrush. Or simply use them as a normal colouring pencil. There's 12 different colours in this box. And again, I can't remember where I got them from. And here, water soluble. Even the picture implies. Well, how's this grab you? For about 8 bucks, I think it was. You get 12 pencils. And a paintbrush. Now, at the time I bought these, you could, have, could get them from Coles, Kmart, and various shops like that. Nowadays, you're on 20 and 20, and um, it's like 10 years ago I got these. But yeah, trying to get them now for a decent price is near impossible. Unless you can find an outlet that does them. Most artists supply places will get you something like this. Crayola is just a brand. It might be one of the better brands. It might be one of the easiest ones to get to. And if we just try to dig this lid open. Don't bugger your fingernails up completely. There we go. But, do you believe the colour I'm after is not in there? The two colours that I need are white and grey. And you might wonder why those two colours. When you look at steam, certainly on a full size locomotive, I had to go to Jackson's Drawing Supplies, again many years ago. I'll come back over to here in a minute. You'll see, and I'll get these out of the packet. This is what I got. These pencils were quite expensive when I got them. I think the... Not so much the lead pencil, which I'll pull to one side. But these pencils were a good couple of dollars each. Lead pencil wasn't, but depending on what you're needing, I'll pull that one out of the way a minute. These are the ones that we are after. Now, if I get this up here, Made in Germany by Faber Castell. Now, you get the off white. There's a sort of silver, some Stadler, but it's not actually silver because it's really it's a light grey, dark grey and another white. And this one here, Derwent. Chinese white number 72. So if I put the two whites together, you see the slight difference greyish white and a white and your dark grey and light grey. They're the four colours that we really need and we use on the N-scale 57. So with this in mind 
I'll see if I can replicate and I'll show you what I did in N. So let me just change to another camera position for you. Okay folks, I'm back to you again for a different camera position again. I know it sounds like I repeat myself, but that's all I seem to do. Okay, with trusty watercolour pencil in hand, what I'm doing is going to draw roughly where I see the, the stain lines would be. This is the air compressor outlet coming in behind the chimney. You may or may not be able to see that too well. Turn this around. Just imagine where the steam lines would be. There's steam up here. That's using the light. I've got the choices of the light grey or the dark grey, so I'll go the light grey. Chuck some light grey in with that. Light grey in with that. Now I've got a container of water. I want to go and spill it everywhere. Here's my fine paintbrush. Right, take off the excess water and I'm just going to smear it. Brushing away from this concentrated area. That's as simple as I as I can get. It might not be too easily visible for you. So unfortunately without a camera assistant, I can just guess. Come back to the left hand side of the loco, which is the driver's side. There you go, driver's side. If I estimate, there's the whistle. So if the steam was to shoot forwards, come down. Uh, the steam will also come up through here because the steam is going to come out through the valve. Shoot it up, everything shoots forwards in a radial type form. Don't know how well you can see that. Just drawing onto the locomotive. If we go through to the, the light grey. Uh, try, try the other white. Shows a bit of a stain mark, hopefully. I'm just get the camera over my shoulder so you can see what I'm doing better. Yeah, just brush it away. Bit of water. Problem is, steam will also dribble down and to travel down a bit. So. What else have we got? Steam comes out of steam will come out of the other safety valve. Which basically come up here, dribble round and down, come out here, dribble down. Uh, and cause dribbles as rough as I can. Go into this area, right. and there's every chance down into here. Here's the other white, two different whites under there. Right. A little bit more dab of water. down the side. Let the water do the work for you. It'll hopefully make it look nice and messy. This camera's being a pain in the ass by the looks of it. Uh, 
that's just a little bit of weathering. Okay. A little area. Maybe down here. Again, here's the two whites more than the greys. You can actually dip the pencil into the, the water, which I've just done. Dipping the tip of the pencil in. Right. Brake shoe area up underneath here. Getting reference off the Inscale 57, so if you have to dig out photos and stuff. because of the ash that comes out you may or may not be able to see that I'm hoping you can and the loco gets ashed and ash will come through and use the other pencil as is, dry Again, I'll get onto the wheel. Well, hopefully, this will be something that will be reflected as the rods are going around. A bit of dirt and crap. So, she's going to have a little bit of weathering. But as I say, I want it to look like it's just come out of the workshops about three, six months ago. Maybe it's 12 months ago. Well, maybe it's 12 months might be a bit too far down the, down the line. <laughs> Pun intended. I certainly need to make it look like it's come out of the workshops and had a bit of use. What I'm doing is colouring in using a pencil. These are special watercolour pencils too. Use a bit of imagination, work from photos if you can. Again, I'll use the other white. because this is where I want all the, the mess. It's no point having it on the facing side without having it go everywhere like Ash does. Hi Ash if you're watching. My <laughs> uh, sense of humour people. My sense of humour. I hope you get some sort of entertainment value out of this. And again, a bit of water, just to mess it up a bit. This one in. If you want to get the wheel, you might as well get the brake shoes. Any wheels down here. So simple weathering for you folks.
camera's being a bit of a pain by the looks of it, trying to autofocus. I'm just going to be mindful that I don't go overboard with it. Sometimes too much can spoil it. So yeah, we've got a bit of steam mess up here on the generator and on the top of the firebox. A bit of steam around the top here with the safety valves are blowing. And some rust brown also goes in well. Here the hot spots and cold spots. Places there where steam might come out. And steam up in here. On these pipes. So around the air fi filter. Generally you get a bit around the smoke box door area. I'll do these little fittings down here. Steam's going to go somewhere and make a mess. And we've got fitting on the opposite side. Here's where steam make a bit of a mess. And hopefully the camera's picking picking this up alright. That's if my camera is doing what it's supposed to do. Lighting might not be the best for you. Might not be best with the camera either. But generally speaking, that's just the beginning. I can go further on to this. I'm going to just change camera position again so if we can get something better for you. Okay, I'm back in handhold position again. It's about the only way you can get the light onto this loco. Camera's still playing funny buggers with the autofocus. See if we can come a bit closer. There we go. It's just mild. See where I've made a mess. It might not be as professional as some people, but the effect I'm trying to get is more so, as I say, it's been restored, come out of the workshops. It's had a bit of bit of life usage. It's mild. So those who can do this job so much better than I can. But the next step of this, well, that'll be the um. Oh, should put some weathering down here. The front wheels too. The steam comes out of these strain cocks. But never mind. I'll show you a very interesting uh, thing in a moment. So bear with me. Okay, folks. I've got the camera back on the tripod again. And in the meantime, I have actually been away out of the metal workshop for a short while. But... <coughs> This is a Hummerall matte coat. And also, the camera battery died, so I've had that back on charge in between last shot and this shot. However, <clears throat> this is what I wanted to show you. And I've put some of it on my loco already. And hopefully, you might be able to see where I have and haven't put it. Put it mainly on the smoke box down here amongst the wheels, underneath, under where the ash, pa <coughs> ash pan is. I don't know as to how well you can see that, but that's so far the effect that's come up. Unfortunately though, some of the um, pen marks, as the pencil marks, haven't really come up as well. That's no drama. 
I can just get my frosty water pe uh, pencils again. <clears throat> I can actually put some more down under here. And hopefully in through here, down through the trailing truck again. And hopefully this time all the white marks will stay put. So it's just like colouring in again. That doesn't really bother me. Rub it in with your finger a bit. All the ash that comes out from under the ash pan. And you just got to go a bit messy with it. You can experiment with any other way of doing things. And hopefully you, you'll be able to see what I'm trying to achieve. And if it disappears, well so be it. It doesn't bother me greatly. Uh, ultimately, when you want to get some weathering done on a locomotive, uh, you expect to have a certain way of seeing it or having it work. But yeah, weathering can be done in a multiple different ways. Uh, um, you can put some gloss in down under here, some steam in around the base. i do the same on this side, just steam around the base end. And who knows, <clears throat> whichever way you uh, get your weathering done, you can use powders, you can use actual paint, you can um, use these watercolour pencils, just to smudge it all in. And generally to seal it in, the matte coat should do the job. And you may have to do it, I don't know, several times. You might get it right on the first go. <clears throat> but the way I'm doing this at the moment, this is one of many various ways. There's a lot of things the camera can't see or won't see. Can't be bothered seeing, perhaps. But certainly, at least with this, it's one way to weather a locomotive. Right, done with that for the moment. Just doing the main bulk of areas. It might not be exactly what I want, but if all happens the way I don't want it, well, I can always do it again. This mat cat is like a, a milky sludge looking sort of thing. So if I can get this right, stipple this onto the wheels, stipple it into here, and under the ash pan areas, onto the trailing truck. I'll run some vertical brush strokes on the air tank. Get a bit more. It's clear coat, it's just a clear coat of paint. You do it fairly roughly. It doesn't have to get everywhere. I'll put some vertical brush strokes on the cylinders. You can perhaps see some of the area that I've got done. Just 
a few more vertical brush strokes on the air tank. Hopefully I'll get the areas that I want. I'll do some vertical brush strokes onto the trailing truck. Shall do the other side while I'm at it. Again I'll stipple that on. If you've been following any of my other previous YouTube videos, or videos that I've got up on 24trains.tv, then um, you'll see some of my other modelling videos. As I say, I'm not a professional, I just do what I can, and uh, I'll learn from professionals. On some vehicles into here, vehicles on the cylinder, cylinders, stipple it in where I can, a bit down here, even if we get patches and areas where there's no patches, some vehicles on that tank and on that tank. More verticals up here in the smoke box. If I can do it just just right, it should show some weathering. Do a little bit on the running board. And hopefully that should start looking pretty darn good. Oh, oh, yeah, I'll do a bit more up here, actually. So I've got to get a bristle or two that doesn't go where you want it to. I'll put some here on top of the boiler, up around the safety valve. If I run brush strokes across the width of the loco, I should be able to get it looking like it's having to run off the sides. So I'll go around the steam dome and hopefully down the sides. Run some up this way underneath the handrails. If I do it fairly roughly and unevenly, it'll hopefully give me the, the weathering that I'm after. Once this part's dry, I shall look at it again and go, does it need any more or not? You might be able to see it if we can get the lighting. You might be able to see that. Yuck! Trust me, you put your funny fingers in it. Bloody clown! Ha. Moron! That's something you don't really want to do: is put your fingers into the areas you've just done. Unlike me. I guess I can criticise myself. Everyone else does. <laughs> no, that's, that's my sense of humour anyhow. Don't take myself seriously. Very rarely do I take myself anywhere. I do hope you people watching this video get some sort of entertainment value. I know I've said it before but hopefully you do get the entertainment value out of this. At least if you learn something new, great. If you learn something old, well, just learn it again. It's 
So let me put my finger into this for the umpteenth time. Let's get around here and do this side. And hopefully, the effects that I'm looking for will hopefully show up later. And if not, I'll just put the pencil back into it again and again until I get what I need. I'll come back to this later, but providing I don't put my fingers in it. You may be able to see where I've done and where I haven't done. <clears throat> now, where do I hold this thing on that? <laughs> put my fingers back in the stuff again. I'm going to set these two together for the moment. Push that draw bar out of the way. Just lift that foot plate. I'll give you a rough idea. Just spin this around a bit. There you go, it's the D57 on the bench now. I know you're all seeing it from the back view. <coughs> but I'm going to use the same sort of method with the matte coat, but on the tender. Now the ambient temperature may affect things where you live. If you're in a cold climate this will take a lot longer to do. In a warmer climate it won't take as long. I'm being as rough as guts doing this. Reason being Later on when it dries, and you get light onto it, you should get an effect. So I've just tarnished over the, the brass plate. Before that dries, I will have to put a tissue over that and take off some of the excess. This is obviously lifting some of the black paint with it. May not have left it dry long enough. I'll just do this part of it for now. And you can make your mind up from that. So we'll condense time down for you so you don't get so, so bored. And hopefully that will give me the effects that I'm after. Now at the moment I'm purposely not going to complete this, so I'll do that a bit later. But for the first part of it, you can see where I have and haven't done. And then from here you can see down all the verticals. And that will hopefully give me the weathering effect. Up here to here, I'll do that later on. Again, vertical brush strokes all the way. Because this brass plate Somewhere around I should have a bit of rag I can wipe onto it. But yeah, an old tissue, an old bit of rag, whatever, I can go over that plate. And hopefully it should have the nice effect that I'm after. 
I've done a New South Wales Z18 class previous to this, that is earlier in 2020, and um, before coronavirus cut in, it would have been January, February 2020 area, and the 18 came up quite nicely. So what I'm about to do, I'll go get my 18 out of the collection. But in the meantime, I'll just stuff to one side. Put that back up into there. And I shall see if I can back up there in the tripod. But at least with this, you get the idea on how it's coming up. Bear with me, I'll change camera position again. Okay, the different view. Just zoom back in again. That way you can get to see it's a little bit closer up. You can see where I've done the vertical brush strokes by the shiny areas. But when all that dries, it should come up quite nicely. Now in front of this, I'm just going to bring you up the 18 class I did. And that will be, here we are, coming into view. That's done using the exact same method. As you see, if I bring this on up, yeah, okay, we've got the light glare. But hopefully you should be able to pick up on this the weathering effect. I just put a crew in the cab, so if one guy's fallen over, lazy bugger. I've got to put the headlight on the back still and the numbers. Once all the decaling's on, you can then go the decaling with this matte coat, which is the same treatment I've done on this one. Saying this used to be a Hornby Terrier, you saw the extra work that I've done on this one. And the, and the thing I was saying earlier about the painting the white inside the headlight, it really would be better off being chrome. But hey, at least. This was a previous project, and to the uh, main locomotives at the opposite ends of the scale for New South Wales, Z18 and the D57. In real life, they were the largest and smallest locos on their system. There was 24 of these D57s, and only 6 of these 18s. Uh, this Dozy bastard having a sleep. Look at him. Needs to be sacked. Falling asleep on the job. I don't know. But yeah, as in all my projects, anything steam, I usually put real locomotive coal in the tender. Then I go over with the matte coat just to make sure it seals in. But if you can get a lump of coal, crush it down. There are various ways you can do that, and I might show you that in another YouTube video. But I'll pull this 18 out of the way and you can admire a bit of handiwork and uh, see what I've actually done. And hopefully you'll be inspired to build one of, the, one of these DJH kits and um, if, you, if you get the ability and the time, learn how to do it, go for it. Well, I'm going to finish this bit off for now, but I will be back. Either there's an extension to this video, or there's another video. And that will cover the um, decaling and everything else. I shall catch you back soon, hopefully. Okay folks, we've come back again. But since the last shot to this shot, just a couple of days ago. But for you guys, it'll only blink of an eye. So here's the side profile, the driver side of the D57 now. As we swing around here towards the tail end, this is a slightly better view perhaps of what we've just been looking at. And um, <clears throat> let me just bring this up so you can see from above. Again, all this uh, detail up here. Now when I 
initially bent all this brass work up, so I'm just trying to hold the camera and tripod, but yeah, I really wanted this to have the slightly beaten look. Didn't want it actually perfect, like it's just coming out of the factory. But yeah, at least with this, you've got the situation where it's basically been out, out had its service, had any major works done, and now it's at the point of been out the main line for a while, and um, at least now it's had a few months back in service. So, <clears throat> that's the arm I'm looking for. I'd normally use um, styrofoam because of its chunkiness. I haven't got access to my styrofoam that I'm after, so I'm going to use a piece of balsa wood. It's not very thick, a bit like me, not very thick. <laughs> but anyway, that's my sense of humour. But as you can see here, I've cut a little V-groove at the front end. I'm reasoning I'm putting it over here to one side. That way it's a little bit easier to see what I've done. And um, it might not be that easy unless I bring this right on up. See, I've fold a little V-groove into this. Now, it's not supposed to be a dirty image, but you can get an idea that's going to be bit of a slope and I've cut this to the same width or a little bit narrower but the same length front to rear of the tender so that should fit perfectly inside there so let me just adjust this camera it is on the tripod and I want to mark around a little bit here with things Alright, yeah. Let me just get this organised. I'll bring this in a little bit closer for you as well. You can see the V groove in the bolts of wood now a little bit better. <clears throat> this part of the video, I did mention a while ago about doing the coal. I'm going to do that first before the decaling. The thing is, that should nicely drop into there. And yeah, it's popped in place. So if I use my pencil as an idea, the coal should come from up here down and up here down. So that way you've got all your coal heaped up here, up the sides, and it's falling towards the centre line. In underneath here and underneath the cab is a twin cylinder um, steam powered engine which drives the auger, which is running back to about here. So if you come back about three, three and a half um, handrail spacings, the auger would be somewhere about here. It could even be back as far as here with the, the fourth handrail. So basically everything, everything here is going to fall down, get dragged through, fed, up, fed from underneath the cab floor and up into the, the firebox area. So, the way I'm going to do this, coaling, is a little bit different to what I normally would. Now, what I happen to have, <clears throat> apart from an ugly face and a strange sense of humour, ah, I'll do it this way. Oops! Oh, I've also got destructiveness about me as well. Okay, let's come right back here in a minute so I don't knock it further. Uh, uh, there's Becky Tin that I'm putting up in front of the camera. Yeah, Puffing Billy from Victoria. Home of COVID-19 in Australia. Okay. I'll take the metal lid off. You can see in here some giant lumps of coal. I don't mind being a bad boy. It's when Santa brings me free coal at Christmas time. I can use it for steaming up my locos. So there is an upside to being naughty. Okay, in a plastic container which I've just pulled out of that metal tin, it's all my bits of coal. That's what I've crushed down so far. 
So, the loose in here, this is where I'm going to be using the coal for my loco. Some of what went into the 18 class steam engine came out of this particular container. Yeah, I'm just trying to get this at an angle so you lot can see it at home. But there are varying methods that I use. Yeah. I'll just turn the camera facing the floor a minute, so it's a little bit easier for you. Okay, camera's now looking to the dark. And let's get my trusty long nose pliers. Okay, you can see that a little bit better now, without it all running to the front end. I'll try to pick up this lump of coal. Vice grips do a better job, and then there are better methods again still. But, on the inside the container there, it's a bit hard to see the light reflections. But, if I can do that, now you can't necessarily see what I'm doing, but you can probably hear what's happening. If I find here yeah, will that, that piece do the job? It might do. Alright. Oh, a couple of pieces shot outside there. At least doing this inside the container, most of it is contained in it. A few pieces have shot outside, but it doesn't matter. You find that the more muscle you've got, the better it is. Come here, and the pliers, come here, the pliers, thank you. Chasing a lump of coal around the bloody container, I don't know. Yeah, ready, set, oh, don't jump out of it. Try again. Oh well, bug you. We'll get another piece. This is only just a little bit, so if you get the old dry stuff that's been around for a while, not been in water, it breaks down and quite easily, especially when it's been left out in the sun for quite a while. And if I just forget doing any more of that for a while, come on, open it. Yeah. I should be able to pick out enough pieces for the 57's tender. So, what I'll do now, oops, spill that everywhere. <laughs> and I'll bring this camera back on up. And I'll show you how I do my coaling of locomotive tenders. For tank engines, it is exactly the same sort of way. But be prepared folks, it can be messy. You'll end up with black fingers for sure. And um Yeah. At least you can always wash your hands afterwards. Bear with me while I change camera positions again. Okay. What I'm about to do for you. Get this out. Alright, you can sort of see now how the piece of bolts would, would fit in place. Just got me trusty humble matte blackout. Paint code is 33. For those who are, are trying to do the same as what I'm doing. I get my nice big fat bristled Paintbrush as well. I'm just going to dabble this on the end. That's the end grain of the balsa wood. Put it on nice and thick. The balsa wood will be like a sponge and will soak it all up. It doesn't matter if you don't do the bottom end, just as long as the, the top end is done. 
I'm put in a very thick sort of situation. You might think, what? Why? Well, I'll show you in a moment. This works better with styrofoam because of the chunkiness to it. But you don't really need glue for this because the paint itself, when it cures, will be a bit like a glue. As you might be able to see here, I'm going as thickly as I can with it. What I'm basically trying to do is form a bit of a bed for it. Okay. I don't care how thick I do this. In some cases the thicker the better. Again, I don't have to go to the bottom edge of the balsa. It's fairly thick. A bit like me. <laughs> Don't worry. Some of you probably enjoy my sense of humour. Yeah, I'll just paint around my thumb for the moment. And while this is still basically where it's at, I can, apart from blocky view, can actually jam. tweezers into the bottom. It'll be kind of painful that. Have tweezers jammed up your bottom. However, now do this. It makes it a whole lot easier with styrofoam. You jam some tweezers into the bottom of the styrofoam. It really makes very little difference to it. Let me lift my Vegemite jar. Right, inside my Vegemite jar is Terps. Now that's still wet, which is fantastic. Exactly what we need. Now, try to do this without knocking stuff flying. So, let's save paint going everywhere. Chuck that up there for the moment. Now, this still being fresh. It's exactly what I want. So I want me women as well. Okay. What are you lonely modelers out there? I don't know. Okay, this is where my container of crushed coal comes into it. I'm trying to get the bigger stuff to shift to one end. And the whole idea is pick up what you can. Oops! Oh, it's dropped off my tweezers! Oh no! Oh, crushed meatball coal while I'm at it! Oh, jeez. Okay, what else? We've got some stuff in here that shouldn't be in here. Get rid of that. Got a lot of fine stuff at the moment. I suppose that's fine. Yeah, I know. Pretty bad with puns and jokes. Yeah, some of you might accept my sense of humour, some of you might not. Can't wait to paint the coal black. Okay, that's just doing a little bit. Styrofoam does this just like a, a, a stamp or something like that. But you get the idea. Certainly with styrofoam, this will just pick everything up, but balsa wood yeah, is a little bit more particular because it's got a flat surface, not a rough surface. Let me just do a little bit more here. Okay, I'll just put me tweezers into my bench vice for the moment. Sorry, I've got me unblocking your view there. 
One dude will be better than looking at me. Alright, let's get all the excess turps off my brush. That won't do us any good. And out of sight, out of mind, yeah, got a rag I'm putting the, the brush onto to wipe off the excess turps. And guess what? A bit more black paint. And, oops, time triplet all over me loco. I'd not put any coal in the paint. Thought I was going to end up with lumpy paint later. The thicker I can do this, the better it is. It's so much better than using styrofoam. Black fingers now. Yep. Finger and thumb. As expected. The result isn't as good on balsa wood, but it is a much better option when you've got the styrofoam. You want to make sure your, your block of styrofoam is cut not only to the length and width, but a, a little bit below the height that you really want it to finish when it's chock is full of coal. You don't want to have a, a wooden deck appearance. And when this paint sets, it can act like a glue. And anything that falls off thereafter, it's easy enough to just glue it back in. So you can, at least you can see how that's come up all right. Pretty thick in paint. This looks a bit like balsa wood with coal in it. So now for the other variation to the same process. Okay. Let's see how we go with this. I want the fine stuff, I want something a little bit more coarser. This is where you get your black fingers. It's either from the paint or from the coal. Don't worry about the stuff that doesn't stick. Once all this is dried good enough, you can then go through and um, keep topping it up a bit later and a bit later. And you can keep using the um, black paint as a glue. Uh, can we stay on the tweezers even more. Okay. Spin that around. An eight gauge chunk of coal should be HO. Okay. And calling up a model steam engine can be frustrating, it can be exciting, it can be all sorts of things. This is one of those parts of the, the build. You want to try to get a decent day where you can dry out in the sunlight. And when you get it out in the sunlight drying, it doesn't take as long to, to set. 
time I'm doing this, it's the end of August 2020 and in Australia it's becoming out of our winter into our springtime. So at the moment it's about 16 degrees Celsius outside and it is in the evening. So this will take perhaps all night to dry. So a bit of patience folks and you should be right with this part of the project. Doesn't matter what steam engine you're using, and if, if it hasn't got a realistic load of coal in the tender or bunker, it's easy enough to do it like this. Let the excess fall off. Then a bit later on, if you have to put more into it, you put more into it. Anything on the side that's going to be a pain as far as the coal back into its, its area then fine get, get the sods and ends tidied so it'll slot back into place I'll try to not bore you too much with this part of it Just rubbing a couple of bits of coal together Hopefully they won't generate enough heat and catch fire. A couple of pieces then I've crushed down. At least this way you can spill it back into the container. And um, by spilling it back into the container, it's always reusable, even if it does have paint onto it. You can get some sort of crushing machine organised that'll crush this stuff down to a decent size and great. I know you can make them, I know known of people who have made them. That's not looking too bad, is it, folks? There's a lot more that can be done. So, uh, I've got another pair of tweezers. Yep, that's cool. This point, I'm just going to rip off these bits of fluff or hair. Bugger it. Don't want un unusual bits sticking out of your coal, bits of paper or fluff, wood shavings, anything that doesn't look like coal. Alright. Uh, got a little large chunks of coal that don't look right. They can come out. Try go for something that's a little bit finer. I used to have a couple of containers, old 35mm film containers, with different uh, size pieces of crushed coal. Stuff that's suitable for N, stuff that's suitable for HO, and then all the very fine stuff that would blend in and fill in the gaps. I've got a fair bit of that in here at the moment. Really fine stuff. chunk that won't crush down. By rubbing the coal between your fingers or your finger and thumb you can generally get some stuff that crushed down, other stuff you can't. And again, you got anything that's out of scale, you'll soon notice it. Taking those big extra chunks out of it. You can now see how it's coming up. And there we go. It's looking a bit more realistic for you. 
thing is just a lump of balsa wood. A little bit sticking off the side. Don't really worry too much. As long as it goes within view. So that's a way of doing things. It's not the final effect that I'm after. I'll probably wait for this to dry. So little bits will still fall off it at the moment. I think, well, depending on how full or how empty I want this load, I can keep building that up or I can take bits off it. So with this at the moment, let's put this to one side. Tap it into the, the plastic container. I shall bring this back into view. I'm going to have black fingers and thumbs on both ends. As I say, it's not dry yet, so expect to get dirty fingers. If I can poke that in without getting crap all over me loco, hopefully you will get some idea of how it will look. I'm actually thinking I might I actually could even leave it like that, you know. Actually, yeah. How's that looking, hey? More like a real coal load. You can leave a comment on my YouTube video about this if you like. Make sure it's a good one. If anything derogatory, nasty, I'll end up de deleting it. I'll get YouTube to one or the other. But don't forget, I've even got some of these videos on, on my series of Kev Workshop videos. I've got them all on 24trains.tv as well. So yeah, if you're looking for anything trains, that's another good location to go to. If you look up my other Kev's Workshop videos, you'll find one titled Kev's Workshop, the actual work workshop, the um, website, etc. There's two parts of my video, of that particular video, and with that you'll understand when you look at my website, and you look at what I'm doing and what I've done, you realise that I've been doing this for quite some time. I don't ever see myself as a professional. There's no, no point in saying I'm professional, because I'm not. I'm just good at what I do, or reasonably good at what I do. I just stuff up some things. <laughs> no, not always. I'm usually fixing someone else's stuff ups. Let's get hair out of that paint container if I can. Get that lid down. So folks, that's a quick video on coaling your locomotive. So in this case, the DJH New South Wales Government Rail D57 class locomotive. So I do hope you, have, you found this interesting, not dull and boring. And hopefully the next step of the way, get my hands all nice and clean and all that, if I can find my decals, I might do the decals. So stay tuned folks, I'll be, I shall be back very soon.